Hi and welcome to another episode of Essential Lightroom. In this week's video tutorial I'm going to show you how you can create a similar effect to the very popular Orton effect. Now as you can see in the image in front of us we've got that soft glow and still have detail in the image so I'm going to take you step by step through how you can create this. As always there's a free preset to get you started but stick around to the end of the video because I'm going to show you a couple of other techniques that are not covered in that particular preset. So first of all, what exactly is the Orton effect? Basically, it's a film type effect where multiple exposures, one out of focus and one sharp, are merged together in the development process to give you a soft glow while retaining detail. So the image is both in focus and out of focus at the same time. Now when we're working with Lightroom, it's kind of complicated because we don't have the benefit of using layers. But we can get around that and get an effect that's fairly close to the genuine original Orton effect. So let's take a look at how we can do that. So you can see the image in front of us at the moment is a typical fall or autumn image. We've got lovely strong colours in there. There's some nice detail, there's some different focal lengths being used in there. So it's a great candidate for this particular effect. Now like I say, we don't have any layers that we can use, but what we can do is we can deal with graduated filters. So we can use those and we can get the benefit of that. So we get an effect that's fairly close. So what I'm going to do is in the develop module, we're going to come over and we're going to select the graduated filter or press M on the keyboard. Once we do that, we're going to come down below our image. We don't want a graduated effect. We want the filter to have a full effect on the entire image. So I'm going to come down just below. I'm going to hold the shift key down the keyboard to constrain my angles. And I'm going to drag that down just so we've got the effect sitting at the bottom of the image. Now, everything we do in this, the panel on the right-hand side will affect the entire image. There will be no graduation in it. So the first thing we're going to do is come in and we're going to set this. Now we want to blur details out in this. So we're going to come down, we're going to reset everything to its zero point, or we could save this out as a custom effect if we wanted to, but for now let's just leave it as it is. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the clarity, drop that right the way down to minus 100, and you can see that already gives us a slightly blurred, softer look. And we're going to take the saturation, sorry, the sharpness, and we're going to drop that down to minus 25 to 45, depending upon the image that we're working with. So that's going to now reduce the amount of detail. So we're going to soften things out, give that slight hazy blur to it, and we're going to reduce the sharpness to make sure that we don't have a pin sharp image anymore. Once we've done that, we're going to click on done, and there's the first step of the effect. Next, we're going to come back to the graduated filter, or press M again, and we're going to create a second instance. Do exactly the same again. We're going to drop this down from just below the image, so we've got the filter applying to everything on there. Reset all these to make sure they're all at zero values. Then we're going to come down, we're going to go through a few other settings this time. So first of all, we're going to bump the exposure ever so slightly, probably about half a stop, third of a stop, somewhere around that, that point. And again, this depends on the image you're working with, so each image is going to have its own different setting that's going to work well. We're going to take the contrast then, we're going to bump this up between sort of plus 60 to plus 80, again, depending upon the image and the effect we're looking to create. So actually, let's go for about... Around 40, 45 on there. I don't want to go crazy with this. That'll be a good starting point. Next up, we're going to come down to the saturation. And if you find that you want to just bring a, back, a bit more color in this, you can boost that up. If you find that's a little bit too harsh, you can obviously reduce it down. Whatever works to taste. And then finally, we're going to come down onto the saturation. Sorry, come down to the clarity again. And we're going to reduce the clarity right the way down to give us a second minus 100 clarity effect. So it's going to soften things down again. Just bear in mind, if you find that's a little much, you can always back that off, whatever you think is going to work well for the image that you're working with. So in this example, let's take that to about around 80. That looks pretty good on there. So we'll just click on Done on this, and there's our basic effect. So the preset is going to get you to this point, but let's take it a step further and see some other things we can do to the image just to give it a little bit more enhancement and get it closer to that realistic Orton effect. Now, as I said at the beginning of this video, one of the things that we have when you create this with a camera, a film camera, is that you've got certain elements of pin sharp when they have this sort of glow around them. Well, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go and pick out some of the details, some of the focal points in the image, and I'm going to put the detail back into those. So all I'm going to do is, for this example, I'm going to use the tree trunk on the sort of the center parts, and we're also going to take a look at this little sort of boathouse kind of thing, this little shelter, and we're going to bring back some detail in that. So let's just zoom into those. And what we're going to do is we're going to come over to the adjustment brush or press K on the keyboard. 
And from in there, I can expand this out and I can now go through and I can create my own custom preset brush effect. So what I'm gonna do is just come down and we're gonna choose Sharpen. Set this to taste. Now, again, remember this is completely non-destructive, so it doesn't matter how you do this. You can set it really high so you can see the effect that you're working with. Auto mask, depending upon whether you want to allow Lightroom to mask the edges of this, which obviously can be quite useful, but also slows everything down. And then you can dial that back using the sharpness slider or the actual amount of the effect that's being used. So let's leave that quite high at the moment. Let's come over and we can start painting this effect on, getting some of that sharpness back into this image, using the auto mask to make sure we try not to go over and pick up any of the foliage behind. So we come over, go through and do all that, get it close to where I want. The same then with the wooden structure below. Now obviously you'd spend a lot more time doing this to get the effect that you want. But I'm just like I say, just trying to bring back a little bit of the sharpness, a little bit of the detail that's in the image itself. Bring it back in. Do the same on these rocks if you want to. Now I'm going to use that, come over to these paint a little bit of sharpness back in there so we retain some of that detail. Same with this one in the sort of mid-ground. And we're going to come to the tree, reduce the size of my brush down a little bit, and we're going to paint over the tree just to get some of that sharpness back into there. I'm not being too picky with this because when you zoom out, it's only going to suggest that sharpness in the image. It's not going to worry about making it look hyper-realistic and sharp, crazy sharp on there. So same again when we come to this. Just come over, paint in the tree trunk, get some of that sharpness back into it. Take our time, go through and do all that. There we go, looking pretty good. So as I say, I would spend a lot more time if I was going to do this for real, but just to give you an example of how it all works. So there we go. And obviously, like I say, I can spend more time, go through and do more detail on there. But what that's done is that's brought back some of the details. So we can see if we hover over the point, you can see what I've painted back in. Very, very rough, but it gives you some idea of what I'm doing. Once I'm happy with that, I can click on done. Like I say, if I wanted to dial that back, I could. But you can see now that when we look at it this kind of size, the detail in the roof of the little wooden structure stands out a little bit more. So we have that softness alongside some sharpness to give us that sort of closer to the Orton effect. And that's pretty much it. So that wraps up this video. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please give it a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button to be kept up to date with all the new content we add every single week. If you'd like to download the preset and a range of other free presets, click the link in the description below. It'll take you through. You can download this completely free. Until next time, take care.